share with our NFA community what successes you've had and noticed from following your intuition, because I think this is a very important manifestation quality that most people ignore. Yes. The number one thing for me has been, you are going to slowly, I'll even say subconsciously create the lifestyle or the reality for yourself that you are predominantly focused on and it probably will not come in the way that you expect that it will. So I think a lot of entrepreneurs or people that get into coaching, they have this vision for freedom and time, money and location freedom, right? That's kind of like what everybody's shooting for. And they think the way that they're going to get there is through um, that they have a, they have a preconceived idea of how they're going to get there by selling this many tickets to this program that they're going to do X, Y, and Z with. And that very well may be the case, but what I've seen is that, you know, your, your, your higher self, your expanded self, whatever you want to kind of call it, it will, it will create the reality for you that you desire or that you feel that you deserve or that you believe you're worthy of creating as long as you show up with like a, a giving mindset and a desire to serve trust that in time like you'll be you'll find yourself you'll look up one day and you'll find yourself yourself in a position where it's like this is different than where i was five years ago and it's, it might not be where i want to be but if i keep following this path i know I can see the I can see the the successes and they're getting better. Yeah, so you're talking about faith and allowing, right? It's like a lot of it's allowing and listening to your intuitive voice strengthens your intuitive voice and then what I've noticed is that as I do that it never turns up. It, it never shows up the way that I think it's going to show up. And right. so you can have that plan to guide you and to take steps in the direction, but don't be attached to the plan because the universe has in store for you something even better than you could have imagined. And it's going to come to you in a way that you could have never planned. Will you share? So I always like to give three takeaway tips for our people to get to six figures faster. So mm -hmm. what are three, you know, practical, actionable tips that you can offer for people to get for entrepreneurs to get to six figures faster? So zero to zero to six figures, one product, one price point, one avatar. One product, mm. one price point, one avatar. Now, you're certainly going to innovate and iterate on all three of those as you go. Um, but from zero to six, right, you want to be hyper focused on who you serve, what you deliver, the value of your program, and then the price point. And you don't, a confused mind doesn't buy anything, right? So you want to be just very, very clear on your offer, on the way you present it, and then on that investment. And you want to help people obviously understand, you know, the value of it and 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 how they can get started and why they should want to. I and love this. Will you will you highlight what you notice people doing mistake wise in this part? Because this is huge. Like I think this is probably one of the greatest tips that people could discover it was like no. it's the scattered it's the never staying too long enough and it's like oh i'm going to do this and this and this and this and this so we talk a little bit about the mistakes you see people making in this specific tip i think that people don't go deep enough on who they're targeting i think a lot of people you know like it's easy to create your your target avatar you know business coaches i typically serve whatever 30 to 50 years old in north america and they're struggling with xyz um that's not that's not deep enough to where you're actually going to be able to extract the insights that are needed to create belief shattering content and certainly to have the conversations with those people that are that are needed to connect with them on a heart level. So something that I kind of teach and preach is what are the what are the scripts that are recurring that are replaying in the mind of your of your avatar? What are they thinking but not saying or not posting outwardly that you know are things that they're either trying to fix or trying to achieve? What are those things? Write those down, journal on those, right? And think about where you've been, the thoughts that you've had or still have around that and really start to go deep in, in that kind of way. So that's number one. Awesome. Okay. What's number two? 
Number two, so I'll say around the program is, you know, what we're seeing in the coaching space today, Amanda, is just a, a, com a completely saturated space. And um, like any coach knows, like you're getting reached out to every week by three to five to seven or more other coaches or programs sharing or pitching their thing with you. Um, I know that's the case for me. And so I, I just through that process, like I've gotten a, a an interesting kind of uh, 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 immersion into what others are kind of offering and how they're positioning it. And I actually leverage that as competitive intel. Um, let me see what these people are doing. How are they talking? What are the, what's the language that they're using? So I think not enough coaches just based on what I just shared with how busy the space is, not enough people are really taking the time to develop a comprehensive system or platform or program. And we need to go beyond one-on-one -on -one work, guys, if we want to really, really scale and um, help as many people as we can. One-on-one -on -one can't scale. So I see too many people just sticking to one-on-one -on -one where what we need to do is we need to create some kind of a more inclusive comprehensive overarching system or trademarked program that really will allow us to position ourselves as the leading authority in our niche how does that comprehensive package in the entire program serve people in a way that's unique and potentially has you standing out above the rest you have to want success for your client more than they want it themselves and that that has to be clear from the moment that they find you. Yeah, awesome. Okay, great. What's tip number three? Extend your time horizon and think long-term instead of short-term. Um, and then I think as an addendum to that, I would say don't buy into the hype. Do not listen to or compare yourself to what you hear others doing especially in your space. A lot of it, guys, is fabricated. Numbers are manipulated. Um, I'm saying it right here. You know, people can throw different numbers at you that they came up with in a myriad of ways through being creative themselves. Um, if somebody is saying a certain number, a, a million dollars a month or 10 million, you know, a year, well, how did they come up with that number? Um, is that what what it what you know what went into that is that cash collected is that is that revenue is that extrapolating from an event that they had you know so many signups for in a given month um what is that like so there's so many things that go into into growth but i think not comparing yourself to others and other figures that people are throwing out and then giving yourself instead of five weeks or five months make this a five year investment in yourself. Yeah. I really like this one because like when you say think long term instead of short term, it's remembering that your business building journey is not a sprint race. Yeah. It's not even a marathon because marathons can be torturous. <laughs> like we don't want that either. You know, we want like this is a lifelong growth trajectory of evolving your spirit really and serving the world through what you love to do. So why would you ever want to stop doing that? You know, and it's like, okay, so this is a lifelong journey where I'm going to be winning at my own game. So, you know, I love the not comparing yourself to others because I think this is something that a lot of entrepreneurs and especially heart centered entrepreneurs really struggle with. It's like, but there I'm putting my heart and my soul and my effort and my energy and my time and money into this, but they're doing way better than me. And often they forget like that person is 40 years ahead of them or 10 years ahead of them or even six months ahead of them or they start at a different starting point. You know, it's really important to just play your own game and win at your own game. And to me, the game is how do I master myself and my money to, in, to have that financial freedom where yeah. I have freedom of choice that feels good and make money doing what you love is like, to me, the greatest gift that there is because then every day just feels like play. You're like, oh, I get to get up and do exactly what I love to do in the world and my, en my ends are met and it's not a race to the finish line. You know, there, where is the finish line? There is no finish line except for the one that you set in your mind. This is an infinite game, right? Yeah.